Okay, now that we have a lot more time to do this, let's try this again. Starting over. Um, this is the story. <laughs> Welcome back. I'm sorry, this is the second time I'm filming this because the first time, um, I didn't have enough storage on my phone to film it. So here we go. Um, I'm just going to jump into the story. This is, if you can, you'll see it in the title. This is my first Halloween party and first time getting high, um, story. So there's two stories in one because they're both too short to tell in a regular video. So pretty much, um, we're gonna name my friend Jackson. Uh, I had a huge crush on him and I decided I was going to go to, he invited me to his Halloween party. So I decided, okay, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to the Halloween party. It's gonna be fun. I'm gonna do a little bit of drinking. N nothing's gonna happen. It's gonna be a fun night of drinking and partying and just having fun. So the day before Halloween comes around and I'm getting ready, I have fake blood dripping from my lips. I have fake blood dripping from my eyes. My lips were all red. I had a like nice brown and black smoky eye going on. I, it was not good, but it was my best back then. Um, and I go to this party. So first we go to the store to get all the food and the drinks. And he lived in an apartment building, but he knew people downstairs and people downstairs knew him and they were pretty much all like family pretty much. So the food and the drink, the food and like the regular, like the strong drinks were downstairs and then the beer and the weed and the movies and the music and the rest of the party was upstairs. And it, it it's Halloween night and it was pouring. So we take the little kids trick or treating and then we go, we get the little kids in bed and we proceed to party. Um, I am underage at this time. I do not condone underage drinking. I do not condone underage smoking, um, at all. Just putting that out there. I don't condone it. Do you, um, make your own decisions, but I personally do not condone it. Um, smoking's a little bit different, but drinking underage, I do not condone. Um, but this time I got blackout drunk. So a little preface about Jackson, me and Jackson were friends because of my little brother. Um, I met him through my little brother and I really liked Jackson. Like, I liked him so much to the point where I was belligerently stupid and could not talk in awkwardness always around him. I couldn't even look him in the face and say a normal sentence without blushing, getting beat red, and stumbling over every word. I'm just gonna put that right out there. These people were not really my friends. Um, I made the worst decisions of my life by becoming friends with them and even acquainting myself with those people. I'm not going to name everyone just yet, but this story is just has to do with two friends. Um, one of them I still talk to every now and again. But the rest of them I have completely cut out of my life because they are just bad people. They are in the wrong crowd. They <clears throat> make very bad decisions. And that's just how that's going to go from there. But I got pressured into everything that I did. Except for the party and the drinking. That was my own decision. But the second half of the story with smoking, I was pressured into it. I was very on the fence. I was like, eh, maybe I will, maybe I won't. And by the end of the night, they have all talked me into smoking. But this part of the story is on Halloween night. Halloween party. So me and Jackson have been flirting because him and his boyfriend had been on and off. And it was just like harmless little flirting here and there, but I caught feelings. I was 19. No, I was 20 at the time of this story. I was 20. I had just turned 20. So this was one year ago. Um, 
And I decided, well, yeah, let's just go to this. Let's just go to this little Halloween party. Nothing bad's gonna happen. It's a Halloween party. We're just gonna do some drinking, some listening to some music, and just dancing and just having a good time. And then I'm gonna go to sleep and go home in the morning. Now. <laughs> it's not how it went. Otherwise, it would not be a story for y'all to hear. So pretty much what had happened was we were talking, me and Jackson were talking the night before Halloween and everything was fine. We were flirting. Everything was good. Halloween night comes around. Well, Halloween day comes around because I get up at like 10 a.m. to start getting ready for this party. I get up at 10. I get all my shit in a bag because I'm going there for the night. Now. Jackson tells me, I almost said his real name, and that would not be good. Because some a lot of people that I know, know him. And I don't want that out there. But, so I go to this homie party. And I find out, like an hour before the party starts, that him and his boyfriend are back together again. And his boyfriend will be at the Halloween party. Now, my little ass caught feelings for this kid, and I got jealous. I didn't say shit because I'm not confrontational most of the time. So I decide, let's see when his boyfriend gets here how much trouble I can stir up. And by this time, I'm already blackout. I've already had a bunch of shots. I've had two cups of vodka. I've had five beers, and I was just gone. Because I don't really drink that much. Especially now because of this whole situation. I don't really drink that much. But. So his boyfriend gets there. And he Jackson leaves the room. And it's just me. And Jackson's boyfriend. In the room. Together. Now. That's a bad idea when. Drunk me comes into the picture. Because if you don't know me. I am in a way, heady. Like, I'm ruthless when it comes to someone doing me wrong, or someone hurting me, or something like that. Like, I'm not fucking... No. Um, I'm not okay with it. If you just fuck me all the way up, then I'm just gonna be fucking, like, fucked. And the thing is, we weren't even together. We were just talking, and my ass got attached to quickly, and these are bad decisions on my part. Nobody else's. This is my fault. Um, I did something stupid. Got involved with someone who clearly was not over their ex. On and off with their boyfriend or whatever. And I got petty because I caught feelings. So I decided to go to his boyfriend. And what, what did I do? I showed him the text messages between me and Jackson. Which... I shouldn't have done. I feel so bad for it to this day, even though this boy fucking deserved that shit for messing with me and getting me, like, back then, if you look at it from when we met and we were talking and stuff like that, nothing bad happened. But now that I'm coming to my senses now and seeing the shit that he does to people and to people he calls his friends I don't regret a thing I feel bad I have remorse but I don't fucking regret a thing that I did I showed his boyfriend the text message between me and Jackson and he flipped shit not on me the second Jackson comes back in that room they're fighting not not hands on each other fighting, but they're arguing like crazy. I leave the room and I shut the door and I let them do their thing. I let them fight. I let them do whatever they need to do. And about 15 minutes later, I'm sitting in the dining room. And his boyfriend comes out of the room. Walks downstairs. Slams his apartment door. Goes all the way down the stairs. Walks out the front door, slams that door, starts his car, and leaves. So now Jackson's pissed at me and asking me all these questions like, are you in love with me? 
blah 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 what are your feelings towards me and all this shit and I'm just like spilling it I'm I'm gone I'm wasted I'm blackout drunk so I'm just spilling it and I start crying and I go outside and there was drama between two other girls at this party that had been together at one point and the one I still the friend I still talk to she was not over the other girl and we're going to name the other girl because she's part of the story in the second part. We're going to name her Teresa. And we're going to name my friend Jessica. So now we have Jackson, Teresa, and Jessica at this party. Me and Jessica are just crying. So me and Jessica get to the point where I'm at this point, I'm already sobering up um, because he had cut me off before this fight. He cut me off before his boyfriend even got there. I wasn't drinking anymore. So there was that whole situation and I was already drinking water, trying to sober myself up to be able to, at this point I wasn't staying the night. I was like, Fuck this. I'm not staying. I'm already having a bad time. I'm crying. I'm drunk. I'm trying to sober up. I'm going to go home. But the thing is, his house was like a two-hour walk from my house at the time. I'd have to walk all the way through the city of where I was living. And I'd have to go from one city to another town, to a little town, and go there. And I had to go by my school and shit. So I was like, fuck this. I'm just going to go home. I'm going to walk home. My friend, to Jessica, sorry, I'm getting confused for a minute. My friend Jessica was like, no, I'm actually going to leave. I'm, I just called my friend to come and get me. Um, and we are, you can come stay at my house, which is about a five minute walk from where you live. So you can just come stay at my house. I have a ride. We're going to go to Walmart. She's belligerently drunk at this point, not even trying to sober up. So we go to Walmart and we get some snacks and some cookies and some milk because we're drunk and we're hungry and we just want food. Because we really didn't eat that much because the entire, we left early. We left at like 9, 10 o'clock at night. When the party was until 3 in the morning when everyone just going to crash and go to sleep. So she calls her friend and we all go to Walmart. We just goof around in Walmart. I'm still drunk, just a little bit less drunk at this point. So like Walmart, I remember. Leaving, I remember. But I don't fully remember like the fight because I was still blackout. But by the time I had left, which was like 45 minutes after that fight, I had already downed like five bottles of water. So I was already starting to sober up. I was like, okay. But I was still drunk. So we go back to her house after Walmart. And we're just eating our milk and cookies and just relaxing. And we pass out. Wake up the next day. My whole face of makeup is still on. Um, it's the I used red liquid lip for the blood drips. And let me tell you one thing. That shit stained for like two days. Um, I had to go to work with red stains on my face. It was embarrassing. But yeah, so that's that part of the story. And yes, I still hung out with all of these people after this party. So now we're going to skip about a week. And I go over there for a little get-together. And I'm like, okay, I'm just going to come spend the night. So I pack a bag and I leave. Um, I was living with my grandmother at the time and she was not happy. And me and my friend Jessica had already hung out once before this. And we went to, I literally left at like five in the morning almost to, to go to Walmart. And it was midnight. So I'm like, it was early. It was like. Min between midnight and 3 a.m. I had left. I just was like, okay, my friend's having a really hard time. So I'm just going to leave. So we go to Walmart. And then we go back to her house and I go to sleep. The people she was living with didn't like people over. So I had to get up super early. So we didn't get back to her place until like 4, 5 o'clock, maybe even 6 in the morning. The sun was already up. 
And this was this was like beginning of November, like the first week of November. And so we go to Walmart and shit, and I have to sneak out of her house early in the morning, and I go and I wait for my grandmother to come pick me up. And so I get home, and I get a text from Jackson saying, hey, Saturday we're doing a little get-together. If you want to come, come stop by. We're just going to hang out, smoke, listen to some music, and just relax. At this point, I hadn't smoked yet, so I've never smoked and so I'm just like, okay, yeah, I'll come over, but I'm not smoking. I made that very clear. I am not smoking. I'm not comfortable with it. You guys can smoke as much as the fuck you want, but not me. I'm not. I don't, I don't like the smell. I don't like, I just, I'm not comfortable with it. I'm like, okay, that's fine. So we get there. Well, I get dropped off by grandma and I get there and they're already bong rips over bong rips they're already all fucking high as shit so they're talking me into smoking they keep going why won't you smoke if you don't smoke you have to leave if you don't smoke you can't stay here and all this other shit and i was like fuck it i don't want to go home right now because i don't feel like walking two hours in the cold to get home at six o'clock at night i don't want to do it so I'm like, fuck it. So they hand me the bong. And this is where Jessica comes into play. Nope, this is where Teresa comes into play. Jessica wasn't there because Jessica wasn't talking to Jackson. So Jessica did not go. Jessica's the one that picked me up the next morning and we hung out and then she brought me home. So, um, Teresa's like, yeah, this is how you do it. I let everybody else in the line hit the bong before me. So I'm like, okay, yeah, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna smoke a little bit. I'll take a fake hit and everything will be fine. I'll just hit it once and I'll feel high and that'll be it. Well, that's not how it went. Um, I did only take one hit off of the bong the entire night, but I got so fucked up that I was like, nope, not smoking anymore. That's it. I blacked out at this point too. I got so high, I don't remember shit. So, um... I don't remember the initial feeling, but like five minutes into being high, I don't remember anything. It's all recounted by people that I know that were around me at that time. So, finally the bong comes to me, and my friend, let's call him James. So we have James, Jackson, and Teresa, and a couple other people that I don't remember who they were. But the three main people that were there were James, Jackson and Teresa and James and Teresa were the ones helping me smoke. So Teresa was like, just keep, just keep inhaling, just keep inhaling, just keep inhaling. And then James was like, yeah, just, just keep inhaling as he's lighting it and everything. I'm just inhaling. And Teresa's bitch ass does not give me a warning, does not tell me she's about to do this, but she pulls the shit up as I'm full on completely deep ass inhaling to the point where I take the biggest bong rip like so big like the bong was this big and this is where like the, it's fucking huge and it's just completely full of smoke she pulls it I inhale as hard as I can all goes down I breathe out I instantly know I fuck up fucked up not even two minutes later, I look over at the walls, and there's a tapestry on the wall. It's a checkered tapestry, and I'm just watching it as it, like, it's just, like, moving, and I'm freaking the fuck out. I can't move, and then I black out, and now here's all recounted by people who were there. The next morning when I woke up, told me what the fuck I did, so I had just gotten paid um, I had put, like, $100 away, and I had, like, $50 to myself to do whatever the hell I wanted with. My phone was paid, all that good shit. Everything was all set. I had just gotten paid the day before I put money away. And my dumb ass is just, let's get pizza. Everyone's like, yeah, we can all put, like, five bucks in. We can go across the street and get pizza. My dumb ass goes, no. I got the pizza, guys. You don't have to pay. 
please tell me why I, my dumbass, fucking ordered $40 out of the $50 that I had worth of pizza and then proceeded to walk across the street to the pizza place high as shit, not being able to walk to go pick up the pizza. And they tried saying that I didn't pay for it. But then 10 minutes later, they found the slip and called us and we went back, we went back out and got the pizza. Please tell me why I used the rest of my fucking money other than $10 that I had to my name that I could actually use to order pizza. And then the next morning, I woke up underneath a folding table, just on the floor, sprawled out underneath a small folding table. Like when you think of like the kids' tables that have like princesses on them, like the bigger size ones, like the outside tables that like the legs pull up, it's blue and I'm laying underneath it. I wake up, my head is spinning and I vomit. I just puke. I fell asleep high as shit. Woke up puking. Um, after that, I hung out with those people about one or two times. The only person that I still talk to every once in a while, and she's, she's, she does music. She's like a rapper, um, is Teresa. I'm wrong. God, I keep messing up these names. It was Jessica. That's the only person in this story that I still talk to and it's because she wasn't there to pressure me into smoking because if she was there and she had been there and saw me audibly saying that I don't want to smoke, she, I would not have had to smoke that night. I would have still walked out that door with $50 and everything would have been fine. Everything would have been fine. I wouldn't have gotten high. I wouldn't have puked. I wouldn't have been hating these motherfuckers' guts. Um, another reason why I don't talk to Jackson anymore is because I found out he got in, he's into really, really hard drugs and like he's riddled with STDs and STIs. He's a male prostitute, which I don't have anything against that. Like, get the money that you want. But... There's just a lot of things about the way he lives that I don't agree with. Um, he got my friend to smoke while she was pregnant. Teresa was pregnant. And he pressured her saying, well, if you don't smoke, you can't stay here anymore. Because she had left her mom's house because she was pregnant and her mom was pissed and kicked her out. And was living with Jackson. And so was Teresa's boyfriend. While living with another friend, while also living with James, and their cat, and James's dog, and Jackson's cat. Like, it was just a hot mess. And Jackson said, well, if you don't smoke, then you need to pack up your shit and leave. I'm just like, I'm sitting here now, thinking about this story. It gets me fucking pissed off. Because to an extent, I got pressured on doing something that I would never have done if it wasn't for this day. I probably would have not been smoking. I, 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 I don't, I don't know what to say about it and it just pisses me off. So that's where I'm going to leave this story before I punch a wall. Um, the only person I talk to anymore is Jessica and I think mainly it's because she wasn't there that day and wasn't there to pressure me into smoking. And when I told her that I got pressured into smoking, she got pissed off and flipped out on Jackson, James, and Teresa's asses. Like she popped off on them and until like four months ago had stopped talking to them completely and now they're all friends again and I'm just like Jessica why be friends with people who are pieces of shit human beings who don't give a shit about anybody else but themselves when they say they're gonna go see someone when they're in jail they don't show up and get that person all hyped up to be seen and then you show up and they're not there for him. And it's just, they're just fucking shitty people. They make promises they can't keep. They pressure you into doing things. They flirt with you when they know they are going to be back with their man. They... Okay, well, that's the end of this shitty ass story. Um, I'm sorry that it was 
a long one. Um, but that is the story. And yes, I did get a little bit heated. But um, I am about to film after this video gets uploaded. I am going and I'm going to film another video. And it is going to be... The story of the time that I did something, and I'm not giving away the story. <laughs> Bye, guys.